Don't you just love the natural world? Oh my goodness, summer has arrived at last in southwest England. And today I'm going to be inspired by nature, flowers and plants in particular, and I'm going to show you how to create some really exciting mono prints and layered prints using a gel plate and using the natural world, especially the things that are just on your doorstep. Welcome to Friday Art with me, Kate Field. I'm an artist, teacher and speaker and passionate about getting people to do the things that they actually want to do. So <laughs> if you've been kind of wondering about doing a jelly plate print or printing in general or creating collage papers, then this is the tutorial for you. Welcome if you are new. And welcome back, those people who have been with me for a while. Oh my goodness, your comments are fabulous. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking time to write your thoughts and just put forward some other ideas. It, it's just lovely. And if you haven't joined the Facebook group yet, oh my gosh, it's a, a fabulous place, a really lovely place. So anyway, getting on, let's get on with the tutorial. So I've come out into my garden because what I want to look at is the things that are on the doorstep. So this is my courtyard garden. I have a very small garden, but I live in the countryside and so I have access to some lovely bits of nature, actually. <laughs> this is my the lane, it's not my lane, but it's the lane where I live. And there are some very lovely wildflowers in the hedgerow. It's just, uh, and I've got ferns. Uh, this is the lane. It's very lovely, beautiful this morning. And I've got some wild roses, so I might use some of those as well. Growing just freely on the side of my house are these, and I can't remember the name now, but it will come back to me, but how gorgeous are they? Oh, and they're really pretty as well, aren't they? Oh, I might use some of those. I've really been looking forward to doing this tutorial. Right, the things you're going to need. You're going to need your jelly plate. It doesn't matter what size. This is sort of a letter size, sort of like an A4. Um, I use a couple of brayers. And I also use a very soft, large calligraphy brush. This is just beautiful, but you don't have to have that. And then a whole variety of papers. Now, these are the sort of papers that I use. This is just newsprint, just ordinary newsprint paper. Some rice paper that's used for calligraphy. Some tissue paper that's used just for wrapping things up. You know, if you go to a, a craft shop or wrapping up glass. Um, some more newsprint. And um, newsprint sort of wrapping. It's got a slight grey tinge to it. Paper bags. Now you could iron these and get the wrinkles out, but I quite like the wrinkles, quite liking the wrinkles. Different types of rice paper, and this is kind of a cream buff colour. And then just some ordinary photocopier paper. Now you need to prepare your paper in advance. And when I say prepare, it just needs to be cut to about the right sort of size. And you need quite a lot of it because we're gonna be doing lots of experiments. And then I'm going to be using a variety of different acrylic paints. I'm using the Pebio. You can use whatever you want, whatever you have. Don't feel that you need to go out and buy anything new. Um, I've got a Crawford and Black white acrylic, which is very cheap. So we're going to be using the flowers and plants that I have found on my doorstep. So I've got different... Oh, here we go. Different shapes. So a few grasses. Some that where the flowers have, have died and have gone to seed. 
I've got some sort of fern type shapes. I've got some flowers and some leaves. So you use whatever you have. And one of the things that I really love to do in my own artwork is to be very local about what I'm doing. So this is what I encourage my students to do as well. To make your art meaningful, make it personal. And personal just means what what is in your own area, what's in your vicinity, what is on your doorstep. Now, the other thing that I'm going to use are some flowers that my best friend Nicola bought me. She just sent them through to me for no reason at all, just for friendship. And I've had them for nearly three weeks now, so they are fading a bit, but I'm going to use some of these as well. So I started off by putting some paint onto the plate. If you are new to jelly plate printing, then the most common mistake beginners make is to put too much paint onto the surface. And if you feel that you've got too much, so I've deliberately put a little bit too much here, you can just scrape some off like this. Let's just get that. And I wanted this kind of rust colour to take this first print. And I'm going to use my fern. I'm just going to lie that down. Sort of carefully put it there. A piece of tissue paper. Just going to press that down over the surface like this. Lift that up. Now I will use that one for something, but the thing that I'm most interested in is the mark that the fern has made. Now you can't see it very clearly there. Pop that one over there. We're going to start to get some quite interesting textures. So this is just the starting point because with jelly plate printing you're never quite sure what's going to happen <laughs> and that is absolutely part of the joy. I'm just going to leave that to dry just for a little bit. I'm just going to put another, another little bit of paint on there and I've still got that fern image underneath. I'm just going to pop this one here, let's just lay it out a little bit. Put that one there. I've just got some copier paper here. Just lay that over the top. Like that. So I get my negative space there, which I will use. And this is going to be really nice. Let's just put another one down here. Just pressing that down. I'm really going to encourage you to play because with printing, it is an experimental um, technique. And some things will work and some things won't. And that's just part of it. Let's just see. Let's just pick up that bit. Oh, that's, that's lovely. I really like that. Really like that effect. I'm going to just take a little bit there. Just gently pull. Some of these papers are a bit delicate and they will tear, but that's okay because that's where they make just terrific collage papers. So I've, I'm keeping to this colour theme at the moment. I'm just going to push this one down. Onto the plate. 
So I'm using the, the plant uh, like a stamp, really. Let's just pick that one up like that. Let's just do another one there. Press that down. I've got a slight sort of golden tint to these ones. I'm liking that. I'm just going to pick up another piece. Just rub that down. <laughs> Bits of plant will get stuck. That's that's okay. And then gently pull that. And then you can see how delicate that is. And I think that's really kind of captured the um, cow parsley uh, really well. I really like that. I'm going to carry on doing a few more like this and then I'm going to change the colour. So oh, I've cleaned my plate and I've put some new colours on. I did have to give it a good clean because when you're using plants you're going to get seeds and petals and all of that kind of stuff on it. So you can see I'm using a very minimum amount of paint. I'm using these these sort of colours give this kind of a smoky, smoky type effect. Just rubbing those that over there. I'm going to go back to my cow parsley, where you've got sort of very distinct shapes. They work really well. So you know, think about how you're placing it on your plate. So this again, very good for learning about composition. Let's just squish that down like that. Just lift that one. It's going to be some very kind of delicate. I might just, just use my hands here like that. And I'm going to put it over there as well. You could use your favourite colours. You could use colours maybe that you don't use very often and see, see how that would work. Let me just, oh, I've got two pieces there. Just lift that one up. Let's just see. Oh, I've actually got three pieces there. <laughs> There's very thin, this rice paper, which makes it brilliant for collage. So I'm just going to show you what happens with that kind of... It's a very, very subtle, which is, the, which is what I want. I am going to do a more dramatic one, but I really like the subtlety of these colours. So the next thing I'm going to do is to just create some background papers. So I've rolled out a bit of gold, a tiny hint of blue. I've got some copier paper here and I'm just going to lay the copier paper over the top of the gel plate because I just want an interesting background like that. And then I'm going to use this to create the next print. I'm just going to do a few more uh, backgrounds. So again, no, I'm not putting anything on here except the, the paint. Because I'm going to be printing on top of these. I'm just, just going to take another one from here, which will be very subtle, just to get the ink off the paper. But you can see it's going to create a very interesting background. Of course, it was inevitable that the uh, fluorescent pink would come out. <laughs> I'm mixing it with some cobalt blue. So that uh, there is a little bit of subtlety <laughs> behind the neon. Just, just a little, just a little bit. I'm going to go back to my fern. And I'm just going to use my hand to press down into the plate, just using that. So just lift that up. I'm going to take this one, lay that across there and see what happens. Look at that. That's a lovely, subtle print so even though it's kind of bright pink within it there's a subtlety with the patterns which I think is really exciting. So I've put some black um, here I'm just going to place these leaves 
on the plate, just pressing down with my fingers. See if I can pick up that pattern. Let's just press that down. See, there's, there's, it's going to be very subtle. Maybe the back of it will work better. Let's try that. Let's lift that one up. Let's just put another bit down here in this corner. Pressing it in. Um, you could use gloves if you don't want to get too mucky. I'm going to use this bit and just see what gets picked up. So you're seeing me play here. I am not sure what is going to happen. <laughs> but I know that sometimes you get little magical pieces like that. Now that, I've got some ideas already of what I might like to do with that. But I know that there's gonna be some more interesting things here. So I'm gonna take this coppery one to lay that over the top. This is why having a few background pa papers ready is going to be good. Oh, I'm liking that as well. I like where the copper is, is coming through with those. A little bit grungy, but I'm thinking I could do some other bits and pieces with this one. All right, I've put some more black on there. I'm just going to lay some other, other plants across the plate. Ones that I think might have some sort of interesting textures. Sort of pressing those down. Just going to press them down quite gently. It's just very that one up just a bit because what I want to do yeah see that's that's going to come out really quite nicely let's pick up that one press down into the shape I hope you're kind of seeing now just how experimental this is and you're <laughs> never quite sure what's going to happen right I'm going to use my um brown paper bag oh now that's quite interesting so I will be using this to capture a few more images but I'm just going to put a piece of rice paper on top of that so I've been playing for the last few moments and these are some of the papers that I've created and some of them I really like and there's some subtlety some of them are a bit of a mess yeah that's quite messy <laughs> but this is what happens when you experiment and when I talk about creating a lot of papers this is what I mean dozens to find the one that you really love or the few that you really like and it some I think, no, that looks a complete mess. And then I look at it again and think, actually, that would make a really lovely background. And so I start to put together my thoughts, my ideas, things that I like, things that I'm not so keen on. And then I start to develop the work. Now, I really liked this sort of cream and blue. It sort of reminded me of um, sort of French... Um, pottery and that, that sort of gorgeous combination and I'm just kind of creating a few lines on here anyway because that's going to create an interesting background. I'm going to press down with this one and I really liked the this shape. I think that worked really well so I'm going to pop that one down. So think about how you can fill your space. That's, this is all, all got a bit wilty, actually. I think I might have to pop out and get some, <laughs> some fresh ones. I think they're suffering a little bit now. And this little one here. 
And then I'm going to start to lift these up. So use that one again. I really do like that, that shape. I think that works very well. Just lift that up. I'm going to just pop that back down again, actually, because I've got another idea. I'm just going to pop that on there. So I've already <coughs> created some textures on here. I'm going to go back to this piece. And I'm going to press down just on the top half of the plate lift that off now that's that's quite interesting let's just bring that up and that one let's just put some tissue paper down that print yeah that's that's what i was wanting that kind of subtle i really like that oh i popped back outside to, to uh, go and get a couple more shapes. I found this lovely bit of ivy. Pop that one down there. Let's just press these ones down. Oh, I hope you're getting lots of ideas now of the sort of things that you could do. See, this one's going to be good. Oh, and that's very, very subtle as well, isn't it? Let's, um, so this, I'm just using cobalt blue here, just on a plain piece of rice paper. Ah, oh, that's lovely. I'm liking that. So this rice paper is the kind of cream. It's got a, um, a cream tint to it, which is really nice. I, I really like it. There's another piece there that I think I'm going to pick up. I'm going to take this piece that I wasn't very pleased with and just see what happens. That's the key about creativity. It's that kind of what if? What if I do that? Will that turn into a complete mess or will it be actually quite interesting? Now, this is where the paper's going to tear a little bit, but you just have to be a little bit careful. I thought I'd show you this because this all went wrong and it's I think you it's so important to understand that stuff goes wrong um, I left it a little bit too long on the plate before lifting it and so it tore but I'm still going to be using some of these and to get this paper off I just need to give it a bit of a squirt please don't worry about making mistakes I think it's one of the things that can really inhibit us when we're trying things out and exploring. So I'm just taking this, this off. Let's get my rag and clean up the plate. Things will go wrong when you create anything at all. And it's just really important that we just embrace them <laughs> and then we move on. But actually looking at these, these little torn pieces, there's some lovely bits there, and I will definitely use those in collage. Now, I just want to create a couple of background papers. So I've just put the blue and then this that cream on the top. And I'm just going to use my rag just to create some marks on the page. Sort of break that up a bit. Lay the tissue down gently this time. <laughs> and that gives my subtle background and that will dry quite quickly and then I'm going to start to put some more just a little bit there's just what's left on the brayer really so not very much I'm going to pop that one down and my ivy it's just this is where I get very very mucky let's pop that one down as well they're just that's just lovely that lovely lovely shapes there we we'll use this leftover piece that wasn't very interesting place that down like that just, just do a little bit on there as well 
that paper is getting a little bit more interesting now. <laughs> I'm just going to take that bit off. That's a little bit of cream left over. This is just newsprint. And that's picked up. Oh, this, that's lovely. I'm really liking that. So I'm going to do a couple more of those and then I'm going to show you what I do with my finished pieces. I'm just going to do one last print. Let's pop that one down there. Press it down. Oh, I've got a spider on this one as well. You don't need to be here. Let's pop you outside. There we go. It's just... I'm just going to keep this um, fern pattern. I really do like it. Look at that. Just lift that there. And I'm just going to take that one there. Oh, I do like that. I've just got another idea. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> this is what happens when I get the jelly plate out. I need to make sure I have a lot of time so that I can play because it always happens that I will have an idea and I love the subtlety of this but I want to get a little bit more drama so I'm just going to pop that one down on there like that so it's not you know it's not perfect won't be perfect. I'm going to do a few more of these because I really did like that shape like that. So using these as a stamp to make marks and then I'm going to take this one and put it over the top it might be a disaster, but it might be quite nice. Let's see. Ooh. Oh, I quite like that one. So I have all of the pieces. They're all dry. They didn't take very long to dry at all. And I've got a new book that I sort of picked up in a charity shop, actually. Um, hadn't been used and I'm going to have this as my new collage book, actually, which will be really nice. So I'll use my ruler and I'm going to use some matte gel medium and some PVA glue or white glue. You could use a glue stick. I'll probably use a glue stick as well. And let's start to tear some bits off the collage papers. I'm going to use some, some I'm going to do with the sort of larger pieces and others I'm going to do layers. Now there are so many things that you can do with your collage papers and I will use my collage papers for larger paintings so I'll put them onto canvas for finished pieces ready for an exhibition or a commission um, or I'll put them into a book as an art journal because I think that that can be be really lovely. I'm just liking this sort of copper. I'm going to start with this this idea of um, of the coppers and keep my kind of colour 
quite uniform. Um, but who knows? Who knows what might happen? I actually really like that combination there. And so I'm just I'm just using my glue stick for this. And let me just oh, let me show you what I do oh, to finish off the pieces. So I like I do like this sort of warm coppery feel. So a little bit of stray glue there. Glue down there. Up there. I get a, might get a one of my rags and just press that down. I'm doing this quite quickly. I actually really enjoy putting my collage pieces into a book and I will spend a happy hour or so doing this. At the end, right at the very end of this video, thank you so much for watching so far. Um, I'll show you what the book looks like because I will do that this afternoon because that would be a jolly nice thing to do. Right, matte medium. A really soft brush. I take matte medium and I just paint it over the top. Now, sometimes I will add a bit of water to it. And sometimes I don't use matte medium at all. Let me just do that. Don't worry if you don't have matte medium. You can use white glue over the top. That will work as well. Just gives a really nice finish. And it also makes it slightly more durable. So if I do use this as a journal page, I can write over the top of it and yeah, things like that. So I'm going to do that. So looking at, I'm just going to move that out of the way for the minute my other pieces there are some that I know that I are going to make really lovely um, backgrounds for some calligraphy so with this one I was thinking of perhaps some silver writing over the top of that that one will go with my coppery colours these lovely pinky greys love that as well I'll keep those this one I really like I like the the subtlety of those and this one, I think, is one of my favourites. So I might just keep that to one side and put that onto um, another piece of paper for framing. So I might put that one to one side. These are these are lovely. I'm. I really hope you've enjoyed this um, as much as I have. I love that as well. Love that. Those images, and this one as well. So. I will show you at the end what my book looks like. Well, I've made a start in my uh, little book. Started to put uh, some of the images in. I really, I'm really liking them and uh, sort of thinking about other things that I could do, things that I could write, perhaps favourite poems and things like that. So I kind of left one one side free for, on some of the pages. So uh, I'm sure that you can come up with lots of ideas of what you could do with your collage papers. And the other one that I thought I would oh, keep, two actually, that one. And that one, I really like the patterns on that. So I might do something else with those for another day. I really hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Uh, I, I just love it. I love using the natural world as inspiration for my art and I hope you enjoyed it too. If you'd like to learn more, you could look at this one or this one and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.